a stapler somewhere? Yeah, there's one. Um, Hi, Tula. Hi, how are you? Oh, yeah. Good, how you doing? I'm hanging in here. Good, <laughs> staying busy, staying out of trouble, more importantly? Yeah, I try to. <laughs> what fun is that? I know, <laughs> I know. Hi, Sandy, hi, Sue. Hi, Greg. How are you? Hi, great, thanks, how are you? Oh, another day in paradise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How you doing, Sue? I'm doing well, thank you. Good, good, good. Plugging along? Yeah. Yep. Good. So I wanted to, um, obviously we're recording this as well, so we'll throw it on the, the family page, but um, yeah, that was, you guys did a killer job at the open houses, so number one, thank you for, for doing that, um, and you know, Obviously, that was a good turnout. I know you have some buyers from it. Carla did yep. it on Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. Sue, how many people did you get through? Was it 9, 10, 11, something like that? I had 11 come through, and five of them were unrepresented. Okay. And then Carla, I believe, on Sunday had 22 people through, she said. Um, I don't know how many were unrepresented, but we actually ended up getting an offer and executing a deal from that, from an agent that Excellent. came in. So Good. Um, yeah, so thank you for that. And uh and also a great job, um, you know, so maybe you can chime in sometime and just let the agents know how, how good it is to do those open houses for you guys. You know, it's not just for the sellers. It's, it's uh, a great tool for you guys. Oh my gosh. It's a fantastic opportunity. And I really do appreciate having it. Um, I've done them before for Josh, same thing where that's, that's how I get my, my buyers because it's really hard when you're new to be able to start establishing contacts so it's a great way to do it it's a great yeah it is a great tool especially in this market too um it's a great tool to get in there and and just kind of get in the house and and go through it and you know potentially get some buyers from it so yeah i mean if you think about it that is um you know what is that 34 people that went through that house yep you know in a in a total of an eight hour span or six hour span right. um that's yeah. could be a lot of buyers you know some of them are represented by agents as you said but uh, that could be a big buyer pool of, of people, you know, if you figure, exactly. how many games did you say came unrepresented? Five? Five came unrepresented out of the 11. Okay. So, you know, almost 50%. So you're, uh, you know, you figure if, if Carla had 22 on Sunday, if the numbers were the same, you know, that could be over 10 people. So that's 15 people right there that could be unrepresented. Those are 15 potential buyers for you guys as agents. If, um, you know, obviously to convert them is a different ratio as well, but yeah, that could easily be one, two, or three buyers from there that that do come through. Just so. just make sure when you're having when you're having an open house that there's not a huge pool party <laughs> next door. Yeah, that would be exactly. the only thing. You're blocking your driveway and your that sign. That was a great surprise, right? Mm -hmm. That was a great yeah. surprise. And if they're going to be doing that, it would be okay if they were young, where their parents may want to buy the house. Yeah, but not when they're 16 years old. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The parking was a bit of a challenge as a result, but whatever. Uh, all the joys. Mm -hmm. The joys of it. So we got Dee Dee here. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Dee Dee. Everybody's muted. Hi. Oh, everybody's muted. Oh. <laughs> okay, so our hi, Dee Dee. Hi. Sammy's unmuted. Hi, How are you? Dee Dee was sad nobody meeting. was saying hi to her. I was going to go cry in my office. I know. She was about to go cry in her office. Somebody said hi. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I don't blame you. <laughs> Anyways, only thing I just wanted to touch base on today was I had been putting some thought into a lot of um, the newer agents, not newly hired, but I mean, newer, newly licensed. Um, they kind of like, you know, there, I don't think there's too many of you, but maybe on here today, but maybe it's just, you know, a, a good thing to discuss anyways is, is, you know, a plan. So a lot of people do have second jobs, I understand, but 
I think it's a really good idea to get a little regimented with your business um, and have a plan. So I would suggest that the first thing that you guys should do is maybe kind of have a regimented like schedule each day, like a, like a real job, you know, like there's certain tasks that you have to do. And I believe that, you know, if you can't afford or you don't know how to use Chime for your CRM or what have you, you're short on time, I would go to the MLS. You have your contact management program there where you can export that list of contacts and emails to any program at all. I use it, I exact, I've used it for years. I'm just comfortable with it. It's $40 a month, but I think Chime offers it free. Um, but anyways, there's a lot of different programs out there, top producer, what have you, but I'm sure some of you know already about it, but it's really so, easy to export your contacts to a program. Are, is anybody on here that's interested in using the CRM? I think Sue and I talked about it a little bit on Saturday. Um, I know Mika's on it. I'm not sure about Tula, um, but if you guys aren't or whoever watches this later are not on Chime and you want to be on it and you're going to utilize it, that's that's on obviously the, the priority is if you're going to utilize it. Um, then let me know, send out an email. You know, we, we've been putting on agents that are using it because um, it does cost money per month. We're obviously not charging for it. So, you know, we're trying to get agents that are going to use it. So if you're going to use it, let me know, shoot me an email. Um, Sue, for instance, I know you and I were chatting a little bit about it. Like yes. your buyers that came through that open house on, on Saturday, um, mm -hmm. what you can do on the next open house, you can, you can do it is uh, it's got an open house form. So you don't have to have the piece of paper where they write in their name, you can actually have an iPad or a computer up and it has an open house form where when they fill out their information, it goes right into Chime. So when you go okay. back that day, it's super easy. You can just, those, those buyers are in there. You can categorize them already. Um, you know, when, when they sign up, you, you set that up in the presets. And then from there, it's super cool because you can just go in and be like open house clients. And then all those, you know, if you have five or you do 20 open houses, now you have a hundred leads. Um, you know, they're all going to be in there. So anybody that doesn't have, isn't on Chime as far as like what DD is touching based on as a CRM, um, shoot me an email, shoot me a call, shoot me a text. Let me know. We'll get you set up on it. No problem. So I just wanted to add this, that I know there's a few, several agents in here that are extremely regimented and honestly, they happen to be the top producers. So I'm just going to mention names. I know John and Sandy are regimented. Josh is, is a very regimented routine person and he is very successful. Kim Thompson, if you you guys want any, you know, hints or advice, I'm sure they'd be open to letting you know what their regiment is. But I find that the most successful and organized agents are regimented. And I think everybody needs to put a plan in place. Like, like just for example, why don't you like write down 9 a.m look up expires on MLS, call expires, mail your letters to your neighbors, even just your neighbors, you know, a few stamps, you know, and like do that from nine to 10, like say, you know, go in your farm and, and, and see if you can pick up something, you know, just get on the MLS. 11 to one is really like um, a go network time. Like it's lunchtime, go to restaurants, leave cards, talk to people. You got to get out there, whether you're a grocery store, post office, dog groomer. I mean, the gym, leave cards everywhere. Make it, make it part of your day. I am going to leave three business cards somewhere today or give them or hand them out to someone, but I'm not going to complete this day without at least passing out some cards or maybe I, I know Josh goes to the gym and he talks to everybody around him. And he, you know, that he's not just goes in and be quiet. He, he exposes himself because real estate is on his mind, like 24 not physically. in a good way, in a good way. <laughs> not physically disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever works. Right. <laughs> so, but I know like these agents do that. It's not just, they go about their day. Yeah. They actually are prospecting. Oh, and fucking idiot. Okay. So like, you know, do that, like, you know, at 9 a.m. do your thing, 11 to 1, and then 2 to 4, you can sit down, you know, have a glass of wine, do your social media postings. You can use other agents' listings. So, you know, you can go over the MLS um, and um, things like this. Like, it's just like, I think if you block off time periods and do the same, right, Josh, and do the same thing every day, it puts you in a really good routine, like, you know what? I have a job and I have to do this. 
And the more avenues you can get into like networking and passing out cards. And, you know, I used to, when I started, I used to leave a card in every single checkbook at a restaurant. And my husband was mortified. It'd be like, she didn't ask about a house. And I said, I don't care, <laughs> you know? And, you know, then she'd come back and, you know, like she'd give me the check. I put the, I put my card in there and then she, most likely they come back, they go, oh, you're a realtor. I know someone, you know? So it's just a conversation starter and um, a chance to give out your cards. But little things like this, I think, honestly, you should never leave a restaurant, doctor's office, what have you, gym, without leaving a card or talking with someone. Networking, I think it's like, is the best way to get customers because in the first five minutes they're going to know if they like you and trust you and they don't care where you work or what kind of producer you are they do they just like you and they want and they'll remember you and get all their emails too by the way yeah you got to look at everybody like right. as, as bad as it sounds though you got to look at yeah. everybody as a buyer or seller hopefully in this market a seller but you know, just for instance, I was at the doctor's office the other day and, and I have a new doctor and he just asked, hey, what do you do for a living? You know, just kind of honestly making small talk, um, went through just doing a routine checkup. And then at the end of the checkout or checkup, I was walking out and he kind of tapped me on the shoulder and he's like, hey, come here. I want to introduce you to somebody and brought me into the front office where his wife was working and him and his wife and I sat down for a while and kind of chat about it. And this is a this is a doctor, so you would think he's got his contacts or he's got his current realtor, which he may or may not have. But he's interested in selling a home in Steeplechase. Uh, it's a million dollar plus home, and he's going to be building a home in Alton for a million dollars plus. So, right there could be potentially a two million dollar deal overall, just from a doctor, just from stating what you do and how you do it and how you enjoy it. And from there, it sparked a conversation. Um, and a meeting set up. So you guys just never know. I didn't go in there to try to, you know, sell a house to a, a brand new doctor I met, but it just goes to show you that you never know who's in the market, whether you think they are, or you think they're not. Um, people that you, you know, I've seen people come out of the woodworks that you never think will sell or interested in buying, whatever the case may be. And they're the ones that end up pulling the trigger and they do it pretty quickly. So just always think about, you know, this person could potentially be a seller. This person could potentially be a buyer, uh, a tenant, a landlord. You just, you never know. Um, yeah, I mean, you just, you want to be able to make that small talk with them, obviously. Like we we were talking, created somewhat of a personal relationship, if you will, regarding other aspects and, and it kind of blossomed from there. So just, uh, we've said it a million times. I know we've had a Zoom about this as well as about making personal connections nowadays and you know, that's another way to set yourself apart from other agents is making that personal connection. Like Josh said one day, like everybody can go in and everybody can do the same thing as far as giving you CMA or give you a cool listing presentation, whether it's digital or on print. But at the end of the day, creating that conversation, small talk and relationship is what's going to set you apart and uh, showing them that you can provide a value add. So, um, yeah, so that's just that's just one of the biggest things, you know. Um, another thing I want to go over to not interrupt DD, but, um, we, we, you know, I think we did a zoom on this as well. We, we have the new, uh, listing the Facebook ads through chime. Um, that's huge because nowadays mm -hmm. listings are where it's at. I mean, I, we're looking at app files multiple times a day, clients or excuse me, agents are writing, you know, 10, 15 offers, no joke mm -hmm. for a buyer. Um, you know, I've had to do it myself, unfortunately, and it's just, uh, even escalation clauses and personal letters and certain type of financing, it's not even getting it done nowadays. Um, so it's just it's just so competitive out there from the buyer's perspective that, you know, listings are really where it's at. So in any way, shape or form, you can market. There's tools out there. You guys have postcards through Chime. You have postcards through Lisa, through LPT, which are a great tool. Um, you guys have the Facebook ads through Chime. If, you know, you're running around, like Dee said, I've said this since we've been on real estate webmasters and sync and now chime it's always good with your crms to, to set a time every single day whether you go to work early in the morning then do it at night whether you go to work in the afternoon or, or mid-morning do it in the morning but get up have that time every day and go through your crm and just do some lead work it, it doesn't matter what you do you know make sure your your crm is nice and clean um do lead work whether that's sending them postcards whether it's sending them private letters whether it, Whatever the case may be, just do whatever you can to, to stay in front of these, these clients or potential clients. So 
Every day is a plan. What's that? I'm just saying every, it really, really is helpful if you set a plan. Like, you know, you have duties 9 to 10, 10 to 11, 11 to 1. Like, you do that. You check, make a checklist, check it off. Like, okay, now is my time. You know, because I find myself not doing that sometimes because, oh, I got to run and get the dog. I have to go to the food store. Oh, my goodness, I've got to go do this. So something always gets in the way. But if you have this regimented plan, then you will have some time in between to make appointments to go do that so that you can concentrate on real estate. Because if you don't put any time into it, honestly, and you're not exposing yourself the entire day at all times, then you're not, you're, you're just not going to make it. Honestly, I hate to say it, but it is really, really hard work and it's constant. It's not something you can take the day off. Or the next day, I mean, sure, go, you know, go out in the boat, go to the beach, but be, you know, have in your mind all the time. I notice I've been getting more listings and more buyers because I'm really focused now on, I just want to make some money and I want to sell real estate, you know, and it's, it's really a different mindset, I think. I mean, you can ask a lot of the top producers and they'll tell you the same thing. It's, it's not easy and it's constant, constant, a lot of rejection, but in the end, when they get that listing agreement signed, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a celebration. It really is in this market and it feels great. So I don't, I don't know. I, I just feel a plan might be helpful for some people. For sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And listings, listings, <clears throat> listings, listings, top priority now, not so much as buyers because you have to, you know, it's hard out there with buyers. So if you have a listing, you got it made. <laughs> Yeah, but I know sure. even Josh now who doesn't need the business is actually doing a lot of, I mean, he's super busy. He does have a transaction coordinator for all his deals. It's worth it for him. He's so, so busy. And I think it, I think, you know, he, uh, he's also making time to do marketing. He's done, you know, some mailings, which he never really did before. You yeah, know, no, my, my whole career has never been built on marketing. Um, a lot of hard work. And then, uh, you know, just a lot of uh, luck by working harder. So, you know, I'm at the point where I've exhausted all those avenues. Now I need to really start marketing myself. So, you know, once upon a time I did some print stuff. I've always done some social media stuff just on the small front, but I do have a behind the scenes guy that does some stuff. But to Dee Dee and Greg's point, it's really important to continuously put yourself out there because if I took a week off or two weeks off, I would lose pretty much everything I have going. So I mean, constantly, constantly staying on the grind. And, you know, when I was at Waterfront Properties, that was their big thing about booking out your day, just as Dee Dee said. So every morning we would come in and, you know, you'd schedule your first two hours for bullshit, like the callbacks from people that you've been going, you know, dealing with and talking with and answering your emails. And then the bulk of your day would be spent cold calling if you had the, you know, the resources to do that. And then, you know, you'd be showing, you know, hopefully you'd be showing during the day, but, you know, if not, you'd be showing it in the afternoon to the evening. So, I mean, every single day was booked out just as DD said. And when you get into that routine, I mean, this is a nine to five, you know, but it's, you know, also 24 seven, but you got to treat it like a nine to five. You got to show up and you have to do the work and then you have to do the more work mm -hmm. after hours. Yeah. Or else you are going to make it. Yeah. You know, like Eminem, the rapper, when he used to do songs, this is a true story. Like he does studio time nine to five. He doesn't do it at like mm -hmm. two, three in the morning. He does it nine to five. He treats it like a job, just like everybody else that's treating it like a job, you know? So, I mean, I know that's not the exact same thing that we're doing, but if you treat it like a job and do it the right way, I mean, you'll have better luck. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point, too, because I think so many agents get in their head and they're this mindset that like, hey, real estate is 24 seven. So like I'm going to be doing open houses all weekend or I'm going to be showing all night like oh, I don't need to work through the day. Or I don't need to do this. Like yeah. to your point, like, yeah, getting on that routine, number one, gives you routine, which is good for all aspects of your life. But then number two, it helps with business um, and it's going to get you set in a focus. So once that routine's built, you're going to wake up every morning, you're going to know what to do, how to do it, when to do it. And it's just going to come more efficiently and then. You know, that's how you create, you know, an efficient business model. So, and it's, it's going to snowball so that you will see results probably in a couple months. I know it sounds like a world away, but you will start seeing results here and there. And then it starts snowballing. 
And then you're going to have to make time still for your routine, you know, mm -hmm. to get all your customers in with your list appointments and things like this. But yeah, I mean, you know, make, make block off time every single day. Like I'll add something. So Sue knows this because Sue used to work closely with me and some of the other agents that I, I mentor or talk to, you know, I'll tell them the same thing. If you're a new agent and you got nothing going on, you don't have the phone ringing. It's very easy to advertise a rental to get your phone to ring mm -hmm. to a start talking to people, mm -hmm. start showing people, potentially start gaining a really qualified tenant who should be a buyer, just doesn't know it. And, 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 you know, switching them to that, but it's also a way to cash checks and get contacts and then stay on top of them. Mm -hmm. So doing any broker advertising rental on Facebook, Craigslist, wherever it is you want to put it, get your phone ringing, start talking to people, do that every single day. Hopefully your phone's ringing and people are calling you and then you're able to convert them, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then take it from there. Because obviously, you know, I mean, people frown upon it. There's some people that don't do rentals. I mean, last year in rentals, I made $25,000, which is more than what most people made in, you know, their couple sales that they did. And they'll turn over to, to sales eventually, Correct. Absolutely. you know, which is so, good, a long-term customer. You know, plus, I mean, anybody who's not doing anything, $25,000 is, is, is good. You know. you know, I have noticed a lot on social media when I do post something, I'm getting not only only people in the neighborhood, like if I, I, if I you know, post to a certain Jupiter Farms residence or whatever, I notice I'm not only getting a lot of residents saying, gee, can I look at it? But I'm also getting realtors that say, gee, I didn't see this. Can I come see it? So I'm really getting a ton of showings from my social media and getting customers as well. So you know, maybe my place is under my listings under contract, but I could, maybe that's not what they want. They just, you know, maybe they want the CBS and thought it was CBS, but it's wood frame. So it's a good way to just get the customer. Social media has been really hot lately as far as that. Lots of, lots of interest. Mm -hmm. But I don't see many agents posting any social media on real estate, except you know, John and, and Sandy do and Josh do a lot. Yeah, you yeah I was just going to say that. <laughs> Where, some beautiful, beautiful ads that you put on like your artwork and stuff. I don't know. You're really, really techy and really good because it pops and it gets attention. Yeah, yeah you guys do a you. great job with that. I love yeah, seeing you every day. <laughs> We're doing a lot. Yeah, I know we're too busy. We and I just want to reinforce what you said, Dee Dee. It's uh, it is that routine. It's getting up. Like we get up, and for us, we found before we sit at the computer, like six forty-five or up, seven o'clock. We're doing our at-home gym. I mean, we get mm -hmm. pumped up because I think how your voice sounds when you talk to people, it it conveys it. You know, like are you happy? Are you? excited are you like glad to be talking to them everything so we exactly you would yeah we figured it out for us we know we need to get up get going get pumped up and you know eat breakfast by eight. and we it is like we have to be on the computer before nine and, mm -hmm. right. and we are and there's there's nothing that escapes it that's why sometimes I don't know, but, but it's working. And I also want to say, I agree. I had a client on an inspection. We had, I got an AC guy we've used a couple times. So I asked him the other day, I said, you aren't looking for a house, are you? Like you said, you know, and just handed him my card. And he right. says, as a matter of fact, we just started. <laughs> <laughs> because I got engaged and we're getting married in two months and we need a house. And I got him approved. I sent him to, to someone for finance. And I mean, now I'm, he's a buyer, you know, and although, and, and we keep doing listings. I mean, we even ride our bikes some two mornings a week in the community with our home sales shirts on. Right. So even That's if they, it. yeah, it's just that marketing, you know, it's, and, and getting yourself out there. And John, he's like the mayor. He talks to everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and his, and his post too. They're kind of funny, but cool at the same time. Like, because, you, you know, you can see all these cool places he goes to. I'm you listening to you all here, just in my interest. He's in the spotlight all the time, you know. Oh, there you are, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, we're so, we're busy, but not together. We're, we're going in different places, yeah. but if that's the good thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, Sandy, you are so right about your excitement level, though, because... 
I know when I go on a listing, they may think, oh, whatever they think, you know, there's a zillion realtors that want, want to list my property. But honestly, if you're like, this house is gorgeous. Oh, look at what you did to the pool. Like you have excitement mm -hmm. in your voice. They love the fact that, that you love their house. Exactly. And, yep. and I think it makes it, it does separate you because there was another top producer out in the farms that went, I mean, really top producer. And she was kind of, you know, the seller was telling me he did interview her before me. And she was kind of not combative, but like, well, I don't think you can get that for your house. Cause she's very, she has a lot of closings and makes a lot of money. And I don't think at that point she really cared anymore, you know, to, to have that excitement. He said, she did nothing for me. She wasn't, didn't even say one thing nice about my property. So that's why it makes a huge difference. Like you said, you've got to show the excitement and be on their side and, you know, say all, all positive, good things. Yeah. yeah. That, it's funny. That's a good point too, because I think we've kind of touched on this before, but um, one of the listings we had, we were doing, we had to show the property just because the sellers were out of town. Um, you know, we wanted to be there at the property. So I've noticed agents, you know, just trying to overhear some of the buyers, so agents, the selling agents with their clients. Um, it's so funny that they'll, they'll just try to pull out everything negative from the house. Mm -hmm. And you're like, you know, at the end of the day, you, yeah, you're, you're not going to hide if there's a bad roof or there's a roof leak or mold or anything. We all know that. But at the end of the day, like you want to try to find the pauses of, of the house. You know, there's no reason to go inside, you know, and this is obviously kind of flipping gears if you're working with a buyer, but try to find the positives. You get, of course, you want to do your job. You want to find what's negative with the house. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you have to run through the house and just describe everything negative. You know, look at the bright side, see what is positive with, about the house, know what the buyers are looking for um you know or or know what your sellers are looking for if you're doing a you know double side transaction here but just you know always look at the positive and i just kind of took that into consideration when i just would hear agents walk in and say oh man this i don't like the color of the paint and they're kind of picking out stuff like that where it's like you can go in and paint or hey i don't like the color of the countertop like just little kind of mediocre stuff like that um you know the buyers are able to pick out that stuff themselves there's no reason as an agent to kind of go in there and say hey the paint color looks a little weird or, or I don't like the curtains or anything that's kind of you know as crazy as it sounds um that's what agents are doing they're going picking apart houses and I don't know if it's to try to make their clients feel like they're doing what's right by them by picking out the negative stuff um so yeah I don't know I don't know why they're doing that um but yeah as as an agent it doesn't look good kind of you know like I said if you know, there's a roof leak or, you know, there's something bad materialistic, you know, with the house, it's one thing, but um, just keep that in mind, you know, going forward and we're doing some showings. Why is that? Um, Lisa, do you have anything um, that you're seeing going on or anything of that nature or any updates? You know, it's funny. We just had um, my, my company just had our, you know, weekly meeting today that's always on a Wednesday. And I just got off that call. And um, a lot of the things that you all are talking about today is what we, we were talking about. I mean, obviously the approach to the client, you know, encouraging and positive, but like on our level, we have to be more, I don't want to say realistic, but we have to be, you know, very straightforward about what we need from the borrower and all that kind of stuff. But one thing that stuck out to me was after you've been in this business for a while, and I, I, I'm sure Didi can attest to it, probably Josh too, like you see like waves of business. So like everything that Didi and Greg and Josh just said about the habits and routines and everything, it's really important not just to like get your business going. It's important at any time of your career because there'll be a point, you know, once this market is over that, you know, there, there'll be a lot of people who, agents who can't, sell real estate because there's a lot to sell or well, I shouldn't say there's a lot to sell but there's there's business out there right now that's pretty easy to get if you do it the right way but it won't always be there and there'll be some people that aren't working as agents anymore so you don't want to be one of those people and I'm not a big proponent of like you know fear mongering to get people to do things but I think it it's really important because this this business the way it is won't last and it will get harder and that's what we talked about in my office today we have we have to um just have all our routines and our systems in place and 
work as hard and at the same time identify like the stressors and everything so we can be better loan officers, better agents. And so when the market changes and it gets a little tougher to sell a house or to, you know, get a listing, you're one of those first people that comes to mind because they, there will be less loan officers and real estate agents um, down the road just because of the way the market shifts. You're and absolutely so right. it's yeah. super important to be, you know, as good as possible at what you do because it's 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 a tough tough business and if you're doing it right you can take a day off during the week and you know if you've got your systems in place it's not it doesn't have to be really 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 tough it's just the systems are everything and um you know that that putting time aside for the phone calls that you have to make and not looking at Facebook and not, you know, returning, oh, I want to text my friend back. Like you have to be super, super diligent. And, you know, I'm not going to go off and repeat everything again, but I just, it's just funny because we had the exact same conversation this morning. So like, it's, yeah, I got to tell them about this. It, it's funny because like, and, and uh, I mean, I'm going to use myself as an example. Uh, a lot of people are used to, the typical nine to five um, where you can't leave the office or you can't do this or you can't do that. And then you kind of start transitioning to real estate or you're just doing real estate part time. And you're like, Hey, I love the freedom of it. And that is one of the greatest things about real estate is you are allowed the freedoms of it. You know, like you said, not to take away from the fact that you have to, it, it's really a fine line of balancing that. Right. And um, like Josh said, like you could, you know, go away for a week or two. And if you're working some deals or, or you're out showing a buyer property, I've seen it firsthand where buyers will literally go to somebody else. They, you know, in some aspects, they don't care if you don't have a close relationship with them. But in the same breath, um, like Lisa said, like you want to, you don't want to abuse that freedom and that power that, or not power, but the freedom that you have with real estate. Um, when I first got involved in real estate, I was working a nine to five and I just hated being tied down to that nine to five. I'm not a nine to five type of person. As soon as I started selling some real estate and I decided to make the jump and switch into real estate full time, um, I was nervous about not having a fixed, you know, that, that set income. So I worked, worked, worked and, you know, saved up some cash and I felt pretty comfortable. And, you know, there would be days where I'd be like, you know what, I just really don't feel like doing anything work related. And, I, you know, I hate to say it, but I wouldn't answer phone calls. I wouldn't do anything. And, yeah, maybe it was good to take your mind off it, but in the same breath, it got to the point where it was like, all right, I need to get this back on track here because I was used to working for somebody for so long that I enjoyed the freedom of, you know, not saying I went to the beach, but hey, I can go to the beach today if I want, or I go play, you know, golf, not have to worry about it, and not answer any phone calls or whatever the case may be. So it's not always the case, um, you know, and, I, and I've seen some agents uh, throughout the years do that where they do make that transition and they kind of just get a little too free with it so you always want to be careful of that watch it i did it myself i've seen agents doing it um you know so just just be careful of that but um like lisa said too another great point is i've also seen a lot of agents that uh started either from you know another job and they convert into real estate full-time and then they start doing really really well um and i've seen agents that have come over and they're full-time agents doing really well um and they don't do any marketing and that's great but like like Lisa said, is no matter how big or small you are in this industry, it's always going to come in waves. You're not always going to have 10 closings a month or 30 closings a month or one closing a month, whatever you normally do. Um, there's going to be months where, you, you know, where you could go two or three months without having closings. And then, then the next thing you know, you, you have eight closings in a month, you know, the next, the next month, but you went through a little dry spell. So you always want to save for that rainy day, but that is when marketing comes in, you know, comes in handy and, and you want to be you can't always just rely on your sphere, no matter how big or small it is. You always want to be out there marketing, um, doing whatever you can, whatever route it is, whether it's, you know, mailers, networking events, whether it's, you know, there's a starting to come back into play, whether it's um, whatever it is, whatever you decide to do. Really. I mean, you can do radio advertising, TV, who cares? But whatever it is, uh, you always want to be out there advertising and marketing yourself because those those times, like Lisa said, will come in where it's slow. And that's where, you know, your marketing can pull through and get you some new clients you didn't have before. So that's a, uh, it's a great point. Anybody uh, have anything to add to that? Well, I've been doing the, um, putting people on subscriptions with uh, MLS yep. and, 
you know, it's getting uh, a little attention and, you know, mm-hmm. I'll get a phone call here and it's a great way to follow up when I can see that they viewed it, mm-hmm. uh, wherever I, whatever I put them on. And then I'll say, Hey, you know, I've done a few FaceTimes, mm-hmm. so I will go and view it for the out of staters. And, uh, you know, if anything, I just tell myself it's experience for me Yeah. Um, at this point. But, you know, I've done it a few times and I guess I get discouraged quickly. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, you, you want to you want to see that again. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, oh, my goodness. But it is giving me something to, you know, kind of grab onto. And so now now I can reach out a little bit more to them because I know they're seriously looking. But, um, you know, we'll see. Yeah, it, it's it's hard to, to not get discouraged. Sometimes you just got to realize, you know, the positive sides of it. Um, and that it's going to happen. You just gotta, like you said, you just gotta keep working at it. It's, it's going to happen. Um, you know, and then there's days where you're kind of bummed out where, Oh man, I'm a little slow or there's nothing going on. Um, those are the days, those are the best days actually, where you need to, you just need to step up and and do, do it. You know, whether you decide, all right, I don't have much going on today. I'm kind of blah, you know, I just don't feel like doing anything. Those are the days where you need to step up go do some marketing, jump on LPT and send out some flyers, jump on social media, uh, do a boosted post or, or try to find somebody that can run your social media, whatever the case may be. Um, those are those are the days where you do need to, to just jump on the horse and just just do it. And those are the days where you'll find out that you ended up accomplishing the most, if you will. Yeah. And uh, with your open houses, I was doing those before and that was really great. But then we all got out of it because everything was selling so quickly mm-hmm. and there wasn't even an opportunity to do an open house, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that's a good point. Now, what a lot of agents are doing, um, they're taking like if you have a if you have a property that's going to come on market or you're going to list, a lot of them are putting it on like the coming soon feature and say it's, you know, Monday or whatever. And they're going to have they're going to plan for an open house Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll put it coming soon. So the properties out there are technically on market and it's getting it's getting traction, uh, but then what's, they're not gonna do any showings until then, until they're open houses. So that's kind of a route a lot of agents are going. Um, they're trying to, I guess, build up that enthusiasm, if you will. Okay. Um, I actually saw that, I don't know 100% if this affected it, but I, I'm pretty sure it did. Um, I had a listing for a very close friend in the Heights. Um, we went on market, I thought the property would go in, in a day. Um, we got some traction like the first two days and then an open house, about three or four do- doors down was posted for that. That I think I went on market on like Monday. And then uh, for that weekend, an open house came up like two or three doors down, whatever it was. And uh, But they weren't doing any showings. So I think a lot of agents held off. They said, we want to see these two properties. Um, they'll probably like 20 showings through it the first two days. And then it kind of dried up. And then at that open house, obviously, that's the one Sue and, and uh, Carla did. Um, they got great results. So, and then, like I said, we got an offer in literally Sunday afternoon. So um, mm-hmm. it's kind of a route agents are going nowadays, especially in this market, uh, just building up some enthusiasm. I haven't done it yet. I don't know if Josh has or Didi has. Um, we, yeah. I usually just throw them right on the market being in this, in this type of environment, but it's not mm-hmm. a bad play. So, um, you know, you're right. Open houses or uh, listings are going pretty quick. Um, but you know, it's always good as the agents, you know, we have the home sales family page. So just jump on there. If you guys want to do open houses to let people know, um, yeah. it doesn't always have to be the agents, the listing agents to go out and say, Hey guys, I'm going to do an open house this weekend. Who wants to do it? That's a great tool, but it could also be the agents jumping on there and saying, Hey guys, I have a free weekend. Like I can do an open house Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it's just being the proactive side of it saying like, Hey guys, I'm yeah. ready. And then maybe if Josh has a listing and he didn't even think about doing an open house, Maybe say, okay, cool. Yeah, let's work on something. Let's, you want to do an open house Saturday and Sunday or, or I have one coming up that I didn't even think about. Like, hey, all right, tool to jump in there. Go ahead and do yeah. an open house Saturday and Sunday if you want. Get your buyers. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. We'll work on something, whatever the case may be. So, um, and, yeah. What I noticed also is when I went to a few open houses, I went in Stewart. I like Stewart and I'm so glad you guys have a, an office up there now. Uh, I think that's the next step because I think Palm Beach is just getting too high. Priced out, yeah. And, um, but anyway, the two that I went to, I just felt this over a confidence feeling from this agent, like, yeah, you know, we'll take the highest bid, you know, we'll Mm -hmm. be looking at the offers. And it was just like, you sound like you do this all day long, you know, 
and I don't know, I just hope agents aren't really starting to feel like this is the, the way their life's going to be from now on, because it's not, you know? Yeah, so I mean, they, like, they know that they're, you know, and that, that's another tool that they're doing too, is, you know, they'll do open houses on the weekend and they're just going to get all offers in and, you know, Sunday night, uh, they're going to go, you know, package all the offers up, review it with the sellers, and then Monday morning, they're going to make a decision. Um, right. You know, unfortunately, that's what's happening. It's just the way the market right. is right now. Um, but it that's how they want to do it. Doesn't it kind of turn the buyer off a little bit? Like, okay, well, you know, I'm out of this one, you know. Yeah, but like so the, many, it does. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Like, you'll have some buyers that just, that right off the bat, they already get, oh, well, there's going to be an open house. There's already this yeah. many offers. Like, what's the point of writing an offer? Yeah. Which I understand um, the sellers, the, the listing agents, they don't, they don't care, unfortunately. They just, yeah. they're in it for themselves. They want to, you know, make sure, yeah. which is, which is yeah. what happens. I mean, I yeah, I mean, it, it happens. It's getting, um, I, I hate to say it, but sellers are, you know, getting into a greedy market here. I've had a VA buyer that I, you know, had them write letters and they're first responders and the whole thing. And it just literally got thrown out the window. The buyers didn't even, excuse me, the sellers don't even care nowadays. Um, no. That stuff used to get a little bit of traction. I don't want to say it always worked, but it mm -hmm. used to get a little bit of traction. Nowadays, it doesn't even matter if you're not, if you're not, uh, it's all about pricing for them nowadays. So yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, definitely a weird, weird type of market. Yeah. But like Lisa said, um, you know, it's always going to shift. It's always going to change. Um, yeah. That's why we just need to keep, keep marketing, keep our names, keep our faces out there. Uh, so like yeah. Tula for you, for instance, like getting, you know, having your MLS go out to those clients, however many of them every single day, and they're viewing those properties that you're sending them through the MLS, like, yeah. great, you're you're yeah. getting in front of them, however often that email goes out. Um, that's and it all. gives me a reason to contact them, which exactly. I like. Exactly, exactly. And so, uh, so I'm not just talking and, you know, out in the blue. But I really yeah. appreciate, you know, the pumped up feeling, because that's really so important. It's really hard to go from like this to hey yeah. you know yeah. it really is and that is so important and body language i notice a lot yeah and if it's not really you know looking that good i i feel like oh i don't want to talk to you mm -hmm. <laughs> you know but if you're excited and you're talking and uh you know giving people a good vibe it's altogether different exactly and if you're doing that yourself like i said like on those days where you kind of feel hunched over you feel slumped or yeah. you're just not excited about real estate those are days where you you want to pick yourself up and, and be happy. And those are the days that you'll, you'll feel better about yourself. And then you'll, you'll notice you'll have yeah. less of those days, you know. And Dee Dee's comments about the structure, that is very, very important. And I'm glad you brought that to my attention. Absolutely. It's what okay. we're here for. It makes you, it does make you feel like you, you know, you're not out there doing whatever one thing a day or this or that. And then, you know, at right. night, it's hard to sleep because honestly, when you feel like you haven't done enough in one day, you kind of feel like, well, I can right. never get that time back. So let's right. just do a, a, a routine and stick to it. Then I'll feel good about myself too. That right, I'm exactly. One hundred percent into it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just waking up in the morning and knowing, all right, cool. I have to. This is what I'm like. Right. Like Sandy said, like she nailed it on the head. Like, hey, yeah. we get up at six forty-five every day. We're we're going exactly. to exercise. Right. Um, you know, like this is this is what our plan is. Like same thing with Josh. Like Josh is up at five. He's going to the gym, you know, by six or whatever it is. And then he he comes home and he's he's got his plan. He's they have their routine, you know, same as every right. day. John and Sandy. Like they wake up, they go to bed knowing what they're gonna do the next day, knowing how they're gonna accomplish what they want to accomplish for that day. And of course, listen, this is real estate. So like if I come in here and I write out a schedule. Is it going to always follow that schedule? Absolutely not. We're in real yeah. estate. Uh, yeah. One buyer is going to call me and say, hey, I want to show this property ASAP and write an offer, right? So like, boom, I'm going to go run and show that property ASAP. doesn't matter what's going on. And I'm going to go write an offer because that's my job. Now, yeah. you know, having that structure around that where I can go, okay, at three o'clock, I was going to go for a run or something. Uh, I can move that to the back. So like having that, it gives you a baseline. It gives you a structure, which is yeah. key. From there, you're going to have to, key things in and move things around or things are going to get changed up. It's life. We just have to roll with the punches. Right. So, um, but having that, that baseline, like John and Sandy, like Dee, Dee like, uh, like Josh do and, and said is absolutely right. I'm sure a bunch of agents watching this and, you know, do as well, but it's, it's, that's a, that's definitely key. And I, you know, honestly in life, it doesn't matter whether it's real estate related or not, like having that structure in your life is and discipline is huge. Right, it's it's going to help you out. So, and good then, point. You know, just just throw that in there. That's all you got to do. That's so. it.
That's Very it. good. Yeah. And good luck with Stewart. I'm just really excited about that. I think it's a great location. Yeah, thank you. We're excited. We uh, we went in this Saturday. We spent all Saturday there doing the kitchen area, uh, like paper area, printer, bathroom, uh, finishing that up. I'm trying to find somebody to get up there. So if anybody knows anybody that wants to make a few extra hundred dollars, we need somebody to go up and do desks. Uh, we bought, we got three desks that need to be built. We have like two small tables. Uh, and then really it's pretty much like pictures and small stuff from there. But uh, I mean, if anybody wants to poke up there and go see Lisa uh, at any time, go ahead, 4836 Southeast Railway in Stewart, um, go check it out. Uh, but if anybody knows anybody, it's hard to find good, good, somebody that wants to actually work nowadays, but if anybody um, knows anybody that needs some side work or something, we, we could okay. give somebody a couple hundred bucks to yeah. go up there, probably take a day or two and and just uh, build a couple desks that are, they're like from Staples and Wayfair. So we're not asking them to handcraft it out of whittle. Oh, is he putting them together? So yeah, it's just to put it together. Yeah. yeah. So if anybody needs extra cash or, or knows anybody that wants extra cash, let us know. I'd be happy. I don't really have the time to go up there midweek and build a couple desks, but we want to get get it rolling where the desks are done and the computers are in there oh. and stuff like that. So if anybody knows anybody, just let us let us know I'd happily uh, take care of them. So and uh, landscaping is not done yet. So do not judge it at the moment okay I'm hoping, I'm hoping this i'm hoping this weekend uh we will have um at least the painting started and the, the place you know cleaned up on the outside it's it's the final product the vision that we have for how it's going to look for that part of town is just really cool and i think that the before and after i think everyone's going to love it and they'll feel comfortable just coming in there with their clients or on their own and just popping in and out and getting some work done. And I think it's going to be a really comfortable, right. like likable um, feel and environment and plus all the cool restaurants around there. So I'm excited about it. I really am. Yeah, yeah. It's super cool. It's going to be a great place to pop in there. Um, you know, same thing like the Jupiter office. So it gives you guys the ability if, you know, if you have clients up there and you're in Jupiter or West Palm, whatever it may be, you can pop in there anytime and, and check it out, uh, take clients mm -hmm. there, whatever the case may be. It's going to be, all our offices are going to be open for you guys because, uh, you know, you guys are our main priority. So, yeah. So Lisa, is, will, Lisa will be there full time? Lisa's yeah. there. That's her office. Yeah. So yeah, she'll, yeah. Uh, I mean, she's not going to be there like nine to five. There's times where she's in and out, obviously, uh, yeah. dictating work or personal stuff. But yeah, I mean, if you guys are going to go up there, we're going to, we're going to probably end up doing like the same system here with the the keys and, and the alarm so we know who's going in and out but um yeah for now Lisa's there all the time but well, I don't want to say all the time excuse me but when yeah. she's there she, she's there a lot I'll say so um you know definitely if you guys are going to think about heading up there give myself or Lisa a shout um and just make sure somebody's there but yeah we're gonna we'll get it set up for you guys like that so thanks very good all right thanks all right guys so yeah any more questions just give us a shout um, you know, you can always call, text, email, whatever the case may be, shoot us anything on Home Sales Family. Um, if you guys have any ideas or I, over the week, like you, you're sorry. like, hey, go ahead, Sue. Can I interrupt? I'm sorry. Listen, no, I just had a quick idea um, that I've been doing and it, it's not necessarily like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be really, really successful in this. But what I've started doing as a newer agent is because I don't have I have renters right now. I don't have any buyers. I don't have any listings. Is I'm going to doing open houses. I'm going out to them and actually being a not running them. I'm just showing up at open houses so I can see what's out there because MLS doesn't always show you exactly what that is. So that when I get that op city referral, they go, I, I'll say, I have the perfect house for you. And it's, it's perfect because they're like, oh, really? You knew that that was there already. And it may not be available by that point, but it really, really has been helping me as far as making connections with people because they know I'm out in the field. Well, that's um, huge. I was just about to say that too, Sue, is like, even if even if you go show one, two, three Main Street, because we, we know nowadays a lot of people, sellers are trying to do for sale by owners. They're trying to keep more money in their pocket or they just yeah. don't want an agent, um, whatever the case may be. So there are a lot of for sale by owners. I mean, driving around, you'll see the signs everywhere. So like, like you said, hitting the nail on the head, there's a lot of properties out there that we may not be seeing on the MLS or checking Zillow. Like, I'm going to be honest, I don't check Zillow for properties that may be off market. Right. I don't like Zillow. So, um, you know, that like driving around doing that and, and being, so like you said, if your client from off city calls says, Hey Sue, I'm looking for the uh, three bedroom, two bath. And you go, Hey, I last weekend 
it's Wednesday and last weekend I went to one, two, three main streets, open house. That's not on market. Cool. You call them. Oh no, it's under contract. Well, it doesn't matter because your buyer knows you're out there. You're doing the extra work. Like right. I don't want to call it extracurricular, but essentially that's what it is. You're out there doing more, you know, you're, you're extending all efforts to try to find them the perfect house, whether that house goes through or not, they know, okay, cool. I can count on Sue because she's going to go to those open houses. She's going to do this. She's going to do that. She's going to go yep. the extra mile for me. So that's a great point. A great point. So yeah, really, really solid point. So good job on that Sue. Thanks for letting me share. Absolutely. That's what we want you guys to do. If you guys, like I said, during these, if you guys have anything you want to share, like just unmute yourselves and let's share away. Like that's what, you know, we're a big family. So we want everybody to, we want everybody to, to cut. Diddy, Diddy, can you, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> we, we, yeah, we want everybody to share. So, you know, if it's something you're doing that's helping and it's going to help other agents in the office, you know, we're not looking for you guys to go on the MLS and post it and make it public. But, you know, if you want to share it with the office, like that's what we're, we want. We want to create that team environment. Um, and speaking of that, um, we're going to actually be doing a uh, networking event. Uh, I believe it's next Friday. Uh, Sean from producer's title. Um, I think Lisa, uh, we're getting Amber from white pick offense transaction coordinators. Um, she's actually going to be in town. So it's going to be a great time for you guys to actually meet Amber in person. Um, so yeah, we're going to be, uh, doing something probably next Friday at Carmine's coal fire in Jupiter. So if you guys are around Sean, I believe, and I don't know if Lisa's, I'm kind of out of the loop on it right now, but, um, Lisa, if you know anything more, just let us know, but, um, Sean will, is, will be sending out emails and probably shooting, shooting something on the home sales family page. So you just told me why Sean left me a voicemail that I haven't yeah. called him back on so yet. There you go. Yeah. So <laughs> we're looking at, I so, think last yeah. I heard it was going to be like five to eight on Friday. Um, so we figured it was, you know, we usually do them like Wednesdays or weekdays. Bigger Friday might be a little bit better, uh, you know, for, we're going to do it like from five to eight. So if people are working their other jobs, you know, and they get off at five, it gives them plenty of time to get there, shoot in, say hi. We, you know, they, we're not going to do anything crazy. It's going to be tr just trying to get everybody together and having a good time. Uh, maybe see some faces that we haven't seen, you know, in the office for a while, um, you know, just, just kind of get everybody together. Nothing crazy. We're not going to try to burden you with work or anything like that. So it's uh, going to be a good time. I think it's going to be next Friday. We're just trying to nail everything down. Um, but next Friday, I believe, what is that date? Um, sorry. Friday is like the for, uh, 8th. So May 8th would be the date. Um, and again, from five to eight. So we'll, we'll shoot something out formal, but I just want to give you guys a heads up or anybody else that's watching uh, later on. So um, yeah, we'll be doing that. And uh, that's all I've got for today. Appreciate you guys coming on. Appreciate you guys watching, hanging out and providing some killer input. Um, so like I said, if you guys have anything at all, just call myself, Didi. Uh, yeah, you guys want to shoot up to the Seward office, give myself or Lisa a call. Um, obviously, if you guys need anything at all, Lending wise, you know who our girl is, Lisa with Home Team. Uh, you guys need anything with title work, just call Sean or Olivia. Olivia is the attorney at Producers Title. So it's always great to have the attorney there. So just give our affiliates a shout if you guys need anything at all. Um, you know, we, we're always helping people. I know uh, one of our clients needed a lend, or uh, excuse me, needed a uh, inspector. He usually uses an inspector. His inspector couldn't get out there because they're just backlogged like two weeks, three weeks. Um, our inspector was able to get out there in two days and take care of it, get the inspection done on time, uh, way before it was, you know, even close to timeline. So it's good to have good connections like that. So if you guys need anything, just let us know. We'll, we'll always take care of you. All right. So if nobody has anything else, um, yeah, we'll wrap it up. And like I said, just give us a shout if you need anything at all. Thanks again. All right, guys. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye.